Hey everybody, there are a couple of documents uploaded as PDFs um, into this assignment and I just wanted to introduce those to you um, so you know uh, what to look out for. Um, so in the first part of this document, um, I expand upon um, what I include in the project sheet about um, some color systems that uh, you are to be thinking about in your poster design. Very basic color theory. Here's our color wheel. Cool colors have blue in them. Warm colors, which are considered to be more active visually, have red in them. Um, remember this, additive and subtractive color, um, RGB and CMYK. This should be a um, sort of reminder or a refresh from the previous module. Um, this is a print-based assignment, so we're using CMYK or subtractive color. Um, monochromatic is a term used for a single um, wavelength of colors. Way back when, in the 1600s, um, Sir Isaac Newton discovered um, this spectrum of colors by playing with a bunch of per glass prisms in his bedroom when he was sick and um, sort of uh, figured out how colors um, or how light can be separated into different colors. So monochromatic, you're working with a single color. Complementary are colors that are directly across from each other on the color wheel. So red and green, orange and blue, yellow and purple, and so forth. You also have, um, you can work with double complements, which would be a, a set of complementary colors. Um, analogous colors are colors that are directly next to each other on the color wheel. And analogous colors, um, that scheme can be very soothing to look at, very comfortable. Um, McDaniel College, green and gold, that's an analogous color scheme. Value is the degree of lightness and darkness within a color, and value is also relative um, compared to other values um, around, around it. So uh, a value that appears, this white here, is going to appear brighter next to um, this dark and this dark is going to appear darker next to this white than this, than next to like this middle gray here. So you can see the degree of lightest light to darkest dark. So values are important because they can help to define forms um, in a painting, illustration, drawing, um, whatever, throughout art and design. So here's um, a portrait, an iteration of this project in the past. Um, I use five values in my likeness from darkest dark to lightest light. So lightest light here, darkest dark here, um, and also my glasses. And through using those five values, I start generating form that illustrates my likeness. Um, I also use a kind of peachy orange background, which is analogous to the red. And so I've then used two color systems, monochromatic in the portrait, and then analogous kind of all together. Um, with the background. So you're thinking about your use of color in this assignment. Um, these steps show how to posterize your self-portrait in Photoshop. So here's the Photoshop icon. So you'll be, you'll be um, uh, importing a picture of yourself into Photoshop and then using an adjustment layer called posterize to then kind of break down the different values of your face and then you'll trace on top of the values. So it just makes your process a whole lot easier. And so go through those steps. I erased my background. You don't really need to erase your background. You can just not draw your background. And then you'll bring that um, JPEG that you adjusted in Photoshop into Illustrator. So I tell you how to set up your document follow the assignment sheet for the specifications and you're going to place your image into Illustrator and this is where we get it into linked versus embedded artwork so your portrait is probably going to live on your desktop wherever, wherever you you have that file and let's say that um, before you start tracing it 
before you've done anything, you move your portrait to the trash for some reason, um, and you have just placed that image into Illustrator, Illustrator is gonna pop up with a warning the next time you open up the program telling you that it can't find that portrait file because you've trashed it. So you wanna keep track of any artwork that you place into the program because it remains independent. Um, it's just linked. Um, whereas embedded is artwork that's copied into the document um, which will increase your file size. Um, so that's something where if you can save some storage space and link your document, link your artwork um, in different folders um, and keep track of them, that will help you um, help you out a lot. Okay, and you'll continue to experiment with linked and embedded um, with the next two projects. So um, then I show you, you know, here's your, here's my JPEG, and then I'm gonna trace over top of that. So um, this walks you through um, the rest of that process. And then this last part of this PDF talks about working with color swatches in Illustrator. So just follow these steps, um, working with the swatch panel and keeping yourself organized so you don't have to like mix your colors every time. So here's an example of um, you know, how I've kept myself organized. And also um, working with a gradient, you can save a gradient to your swatch panel as well. So that way you don't have to redo your gradient every time. So there's the first document, um, Info 1. There's also a PDF about type tips. So read through this. Um, it's pretty self-explanatory in terms of things to think about when working with type which can seem overwhelming, um, but just read it over a couple of times and reference it as you're working, um, and uh, especially working with the type tools, but there are six different type tools in Illustrator. And then this um, last document, more poster project in, intro um, or info, um, I uh, give you some information about screenshots working with type. Um, you can access it directly from the, the toolkit and also from the menu bar going to the type um, option. Um, above, you can add fonts from your type kit, which I do all the time. I love going through um, Adobe's um, type kit and downloading free fonts um, to my um, system. So I um, take you through some screenshots of just, you can draw a line and then you can add text on that line. Um, and remember that diagonals are way more dynamic than horizontal or vertical. So it's just something to think about in terms of composition. And then the last part, um, I walk you through what to do when you're finished, how to export this thing um, out of the program. And since these are going to eventually be printed, um, I walk you through how to do that. Always wanna make sure your use artboards function is checked. If it's not, your file might look something like this, which is not cool, okay? So follow these steps. Um, I also give you a screenshot of um, the Copy Center request um, panel 